which is hosted by Wasiliana Hub. This is a quarterly uh, session that is hosted by Wasiliana Hub to give us a full day as the mediation community to be able to learn, grow, and at the same time to be able to find ways to be able to serve and to serve better. We are delighted that this in this month of uh, September, we have uh, our one of the first of our regional series that we will be hosting and we will be learning more about it. So Karibu Nisana yet again, my name is Wangale Kabiru and I'm the convener at Wasiliana Hub Mediators, a great community of professional mediators. We are driven by our vision of uh, tech justice with uh, enabling mediation and by us being able to be on this platform, this is actually an, to exemplify what technology is able to do in uh, transforming the professional mediation practice. As our quarter three symposium day, this is our 10 a.m. session. And uh, our 10 a.m. session will enable us to be able to learn much more about the opportunities that are there for mediators and also just for the mediation profession to be able to serve in the workplace. We will start off with uh, the national anthem as a prayer for our nation, for our region, and also for the poor of the whole world. And then we will proceed on to uh, presentations by our uh, great uh, panel of speakers that we have today, whom I, I will be introducing as we proceed on. For the colleagues who are in the conversation um, uh, today with us, please feel free to drop in your nuggets, your questions or comments in the chat, and we'll be able to share them right after the presentations by our great uh, panel. So to start us off, allow me to uh, give us the, uh, the, 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 the East African community anthem in Swahili, the first stanza and the chorus, and I will recite it. And then that will be followed by the Kenyan national anthem, the first stanza, and then we will invite Madam Grace Nabakoza from the Federation of Uganda Employers to please uh, guide us through the Ugandan national anthem. So the East African community anthem. E mungu tuwaomba ulinde jumuia Afrika mashariki. Tuwezeshe kuishi kwa amani, Tutimize na malengo yetu. Jumuiya yetu sote tuilinde. Tuwajibike tuimarike. Umoja wetu minguzo yetu. Idumu jumuiya yetu. That is the East African community anthem in Swahili, the first stanza and the chorus. And now to the Kenyan national anthem in Kiswahili. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukai na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. At this point, we invite Madam Grace Nabakoza from the Federation of Uganda Employers, the head of legal, to please take us through the Ugandan national anthem. Karibu sana, nyabo Grace Nabakoza. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Wangari. So, um, the first stanza goes, O Uganda, may God uphold thee. We lay our future in thy hands, united free for liberty. Together we always stand. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Grace Tavakola, for uh, sharing with us the Ugandan National Anthem. So as I've said, uh, today is uh, the 21st day, 23rd day of um, the year 2021 in uh, September, and it's a Thursday, and this is our, our session two for the uh, uh, quarter three virtual mediation day symposium 2021. And um, our session today is uh, a part of the regional, a regional outlook at the alternatives in labor disputes resolution and workplace relations. And this is a first in the series of the East African community. And we're delighted to be hosting uh, Uganda to be able to understand the uh, labor disputes resolution and workplace relations practice um, in Uganda. And uh, for our session, we are delighted that um, 
we have Madam Grace Navakosa, who is the head of legal at the Federation of Uganda Employers. And also we acknowledge Mr. Douglas Opio, who is the executive director at the Federation of Uganda Employers. For our session today, uh, at this particular point in time, we will also have Madam Patricia Oketch, who is a counseling psychologist and a mediator and is one of our masterclass uh, leaders at uh, Wasilena Hub. And the segment by Madam Patricia Oketch will be on uh, mental health, this being the mental, I mean, being mental health month and mediation in the workplace. A very apt uh, discussion considering that uh, the workplace is becoming more and more human centric in its in its approach. So the discussions for today will enable us to be able to understand alternative labor dispute resolution in Uganda. At uh, the 2 p.m. today, we will have a session on the International Peace Day celebrations, and that will be a session on Clubhouse. Please look out for the uh, website uh, posting for this uh, particular session, and you will be able to connect on. Then at uh, 5 p.m., we will have our next uh, se our, our session uh, on this uh, uh, Zoom platform, and that session will be on conciliation uh, in Kenya. We encourage mediators to be able to also be on that particular call or listen in also to the recording because conciliation is also a practice that uh, mediators have been able to add on to their practice and also to even for in the workplace for it to be used especially in uh, labor labor disputes so we started off our morning session at 7 a.m with the women in mediation a prayer fellowship hour and it's a great delight to be getting on to session two Allow me at this particular point in time then to be able to invite um, our next speaker, who is Madame Patricia Ketch, to please um, settle in. Karibu sana, and in case you need more information on Wasilian Hub, please feel free to visit the Wasilian Hub website, which is wasilianahubmediators.co.ke for more information or to even be able to connect with a mediator. Madame Patricia Ketch, Ujambo, how are you today? Niko Salama, Asante Sana. I'm glad, uh, I'm, I'm yes. glad to be here at this time. Karibu, Karibu Sana, yes. Yeah. And uh, yes, now okay. I think we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are ready for you. You can go back on the slide. You can go back on the slide, the, yes. the first slide. The, the yes. first one, yeah, just, yes. So that, yeah. Wonderful, <laughs> thank you. So our thank first, you. yes. So our first, our first session, uh, or our first uh, segment of this particular session, is uh, with uh, uh, our counseling psychologist and mediator Patricia Ketch, and uh, she will be taking us through mental health and mediation in the workplace to help us to understand uh, the place of uh, mental health, how it impacts the workplace, and also. Um, how mediation works or would work best in from understanding mental health. So Karibu Sana and thank you, this is your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wangari, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity again. Um, mental health, uh, I thought I would start with just letting you know how WHO defines it. And WHO defines mental health as a state of well-being in which an individual realizes his or her, abil her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. So mental health is built with the cognitive, the behavioral, and the emotional well-being of a person. That, 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 is, that is what it is. It's about how you feel, how you think, how you behave. In Kenya, there are about uh, one out of 10 people who suffer from a common mental disorder or a common uh, mental illness. And the leading mental disorder in Kenya is depression and anxiety. Uh, mental illness most of the time comes with depression, stress, or even when you have had grief, and some of these are caused by burnout. Maybe we just have a, um, a meaning of burnout. And burnout, uh, we would say is, um, it's described as an exhausted state in which a person loses interest in a particular uh, activity or 
uh, like they can be very tired and even in life in general, they, they, they don't have the emotions that go with life and with the things they have to do. Um, often this leads to diminished health and social withdrawal, depression, and uh, spiritual malaise, you know, all these things that would make you feel like you want to stay on your own. Some of the causes of this, uh, and this is very general, is lack of adequate support from employer. Um, sometimes you even take on more than you can handle, and so it brings, brings the stress, and also poor self-care. Um, the self-reliance, when you want to rely on yourself, if you, I'll give that example of a workplace, you're in a workplace and you are so scared of getting other people to help you because you feel they're maybe better than you. So you have that self-reliance, I must do this by myself. And um, I've mentioned self-care, but also self-care as in, do you take leave? Do you have weekend breaks at the weekend? What are you doing? Are you relaxing? And then the, the signs that you would be looking at uh, when it comes to mental illness is, are you sleeping well? Uh, have you lost your appetite? Is there a dramatic change in your way of sleeping? Has there been mood changes? Um, maybe uh, you are quick to get angry, you are quick to feel lonely and, and alone and keep away from people. Are you withdrawing from people? So from the other people, from social events, if people invite you, you don't want to go, those are signs. Uh, you have a drop in functioning. Um, that is a really un unusual drop, like how you function in school, in society, in the things that you do, you quit the sports you used to do, you quit doing work you wanted to do. Maybe if you're a teacher, you, you really don't feel like going to school anymore. And then there's a problem in thinking. You, you, you can't concentrate. Uh, you, you, have, uh, you have a problem with remembering. You have a problem maybe with your speech. Uh, you have increased sensitivity, heightened sensitivity to sights, to sounds, to smells of touch. Uh, you, you, you have that increased sensitivity. So in that, you can know that there's some mental health issues that you are having. Then mental illness may be manifest may man manifest itself at the mediation by way of emotional outbursts, crying, excess anger, and withdrawal. Uh, withdrawal, you know, you don't want to continue with um, with the mediation. How can you tell you have mental illness? Now, apart from what I've just said, there's apathy, there's feeling disconnected, there's illogical thinking, there's nervousness, um, nervousness, and even unusual behavior. And I've mentioned some of that. The effects of excessive workload at workplace also causes uh, mental health issues. And you find that increased workload that employees want to do the best job and feeling the obligation to try and complete their work, the work assigned. So they start getting stressed if that workload is too much and they can't perform the way they would like to perform. Um, there is also home life conflict. They start um, having issues with, uh, with at home. They don't re react the same way. They don't relate in the same way. Um, uh, and, and then uh, there's also um, health problems. So where there are health problems, you find you have high levels of stress, blood pressure comes in, maybe weight gain, you have uh, sugar issues. If you used to eat well, you no longer eat well. So those are the type of health problems that would come. And this comes because of what you're doing at work. It affects you and it goes all the way down to how you're going to feel physically. Then there is employee burnout. And um, in employee burnout, you, you know it, uh, you remember I said burnout is when you feel tired. So 
mentally, you are exhausted emotionally, physically, all that comes in. Uh, so your performance also reduces. And this, this also might lead to absenteeism, uh, accidents, and uh, maybe I can just give an example of somebody who used to work so much and she would push herself, leave the office late, try to come early, and one day she's driving along a road and she just hits a, a lamppost and has an accident because of the way that the workload that she had, the way she thought she should perform, and the way that her concentration had gone down. And, and um, once she left this job and went to another job, she performed better because of the way she was treated at that place. Um, impacts of poor mental health in the workplace. How does this affect uh, the workplace? The job performance and productivity becomes very low. Uh, engagement with one's work is not there because you go in, uh, you are physically at work, but emotionally you are not there and you cannot see what it is that you're producing, so you can't quite uh, go on. The engagement is very little. Communication with co-workers is um, uh, disrupted. Uh, sometimes it's because of uh, the way you're feeling. You get angry quickly. You don't want to talk to people. You are withdrawing. If somebody asks you a question, you will not answer. And then there's physical cap capability and delay functioning. So your physical capability at the place of work also reduces. Um, and there's a delay in the way that somebody normally functions. So this is to highlight what even the employer could uh, notice and uh, start helping their employee with. Then um, how do you maintain the good health? There are steps that one can take to maintain good health. One of them is exercise. And this has been proven to improve mental health by reducing anxiety, depression, negative mood, social withdrawal, and, and much more. It even uplifts your uh, um, self-esteem and cognitive functioning. So exercise, and, and the best exercise or the most simple exercise is just to walk. And when you burn that energy, and we call it negative energy, when you burn that negative energy, it helps you to reduce the anxiety, the depression, any, any mood. And it has to be something that you now do consistently. So then you can maintain a good health. I, I believe for, for those who have tried walking, they know how it feels like once you have walked and you come back. If you are in a place that you can't walk, there is a lot of other exercises that you can find in the net. And with simple walking exercises, if you are able to do that, you will improve your mental health. The other is to seek psychological help, which is also good. If you're doing the exercises, you need to seek psychological help. This will help you reduce your stress and anxiety. And not only that, you also are given tools that you can use. So you will be given tools that you can use to help you at your place of work, to help you uh, get better in your mental health. So you will have that, you will have that, um, uh, that help from a, a, a psychologist. Um, sometimes because of, uh, of poor mental health, we stop doing those things that we love. If we loved farming, we stopped farming. If we just had a small kitchen garden that was ours and we would do things with it, we stopped doing that. And so here is a time when you then need to go back to what you used to love to do. How was I doing it? How can I go back? There is one that I have not mentioned here, but that is to get support. Get somebody who will help you. Um, be open to talk to somebody and get somebody who will support you to tell you now we need to do this. We need to go back to this kitchen garden. Can we work on it? How, does, how will it help you? If you are doing uh, chicken, for example, for those of us who keep chicken, uh, go back to keeping that chicken because that, that helps you mentally. Um, how can a, uh, an employer support uh, an employee. 
there's time management training. An employer can train their uh, employee to manage their time. And this is also done in counseling, but I believe also in co by coaching. So you can either use a counselor or a coach to ensure that your employees can manage their time. They know how much time to put in for what particular jobs and how to put it in, what is their prime time, because some of us will work better in the morning, others work better in the afternoon, and that will also help. <clears throat> um, then there is uh, implementing of uh, morning briefs. Morning briefs is a place where you can go and talk about the previous day, what happened, what you haven't done, uh, what your plan is for the day, and what support you need. And if an employer can do this, then the employee will be able to start knowing that they are appreciated. You know, somebody is listening to them. Somebody is taking their, their ideas and, and they are able to, um, they, are, they are able to implement. And so that will reduce the stress and re reduce the anxiety. Uh, Offer quiet areas. So, some of us, sometimes we just want to withdraw and sit in a quiet place for a while. So if you have a room where people can just go have their coffee quietly without any disturbance, that is a good way of helping employees reduce their stress. So it is a, a room where somebody just goes in to sit. They don't have to go with paper or with anything, but they just go and have a quiet time. there. Then use task management software. Um, where, where you are able to get a software as an employer, you can get it and this will help track projects. I have seen um, in places where the accounts uh, departments have to pay uh, somebody money, whether it is a contractor, whether it's an employee. They, once you put in your, your request, you can track it and know where it has gone, how far it has gone. This, this is helpful. This is helpful and it helps also in a project because if you are doing a project, then you know uh, this project in 10 days, this is where I should be. So that, that, that is a helpful tool. And you can also have it for individual tasks. So you can have it for the company and you can have it for individual tasks. Um, you can make the employee feel valued. You know, we are, we are humans and we are spoiled with a pat at the back, with a smile at the job you've done, with a thank you. With, oh, you've, this is an improvement. You've done so well. This is a real improvement. And with such things, then you are able to um, uh, increase the, the self-esteem that somebody has. Um, now, the most important part for mediators who are here is how does this then impact you as a mediator? Knowing that mental health is there, mental illness is there, and that um, when you don't have good mental health, then you have a lot of things happening in your life. You can't make good decisions. Uh, you want to withdraw. So how does this impact a mediator? So uh, there's a... Um, a person, Visha BB, he says mediators, unless they are also trained mental health professionals, are not capable of determining whether or not someone has mental illness, and if so, what the actual diagnosis is. But that should not discourage us because we are not able to, we don't have the tools as, as a mediator, that should not discourage us because there are those who can do it. And then one lacks the energy. How does, it, how does it also impact the mediation? Because one lacks the energy to make a decision and they may enter into the agreement that they later regret because they are so tired. They don't want to think. They don't want to, to talk. So they are in that position of just saying, it's okay, let me just do it. And, and an example of that is um, a couple comes in. They want to do child... Um, uh, they want to find out how to deal with their son. And, and, and the lady is so tired that when the man says, I'm still going to be keeping this child, you can't have this child. She's like, I actually may choke her. I am tired. I can't go on. I think just write the agreement, let him keep on keeping that child. One day, 
I will also have custody or I'll also have this visiting rights or I'll also be able to pay. Now, the Medica knows the heart of, the, of this person. So they need to help the person get to a point of saying, no, I also need to see this child. So that then is where this lack of energy would come in. Um, then they simply accept, like I've said, simply accept to come for mediation to fulfill a requirement. Ah, let me just go because I have to go. I've been told to go. But not that they have that energy and that thought and that mind to go by themselves. Um, how can we help? When we realize that one is saying, it's okay, now I just have to go on. Yeah, one day that child will look for me. Then we need to come in as mediators. We may not know that they have a mental illness, but we will know that we can help them to make this decision. And so uh, short sessions in different days or a caucus, as we may call it, uh, would help. Others may need to have a frequent break just to give them a break. As you're doing this, you know that they've reached a point of being tired, give them a break, let them walk out, let them take a cup of tea and then come back to continue with this situation. The challenge for us, uh, mediators is to reflect on our ability to be truly flexible. We must be flexible. We must not be rigid to the uh, way we have been taught mediation and say, because I've been told we must write an agreement, we must do it. And also we must be inclusive and collaborative. When I talk about inclusive and collaborative, I'm talking about um, Bringing in, when, when we see that there could be a problem and I'm not able to handle, bringing in a psychologist, bringing in a mental health person, bringing in um, a, maybe a doctor, depending on how you see the situation. So we need to be able to include other professionals and to collaborate with them. What can we do in the session? We want to be seeking to create psychological safe environment. Um, a psychologically safe environment is a place where the, um, the party will know that they are being listened to, will know that somebody is uh, trying to actually find out what the problem is, not to demean them, but to help them make a good choice. Uh, the, the definition here is being able to show the employ, employee oneself without fear of negative consequences of self-image. So when, 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 when we are dealing with somebody who has some mental issues, then we need to make sure that they are very safe in the place where they are. So like I've said, make sure that you are listening to them, you are um, uh, supporting them by uh, giving them direction, they feel that you are there for them. Um, oh no, sorry about that. Yep. I think I, I think that 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 is where I'm supposed to end unless there's any questions. And and I must say it's a very broad um, subject. So we've like put it together just to give you a little knowledge of what you can come you can find because there are many mental disorders that would come into a mediator's office. There's bipolar, there's schizophrenia. There are those big names, but I've only brought it to what you might find at the workplace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thea. Thank you very much, uh, Mediator Patricia Ketch. Mediator Patricia Ketch is uh, one of our masters, uh, masterclass leader at our uh, uh, Wasiliana Hub. And uh, she's a counseling psychologist and uh, mediator. And her, se her segment or session uh, today was to take us through mental health 
and the workplace and uh, that has been a very very good coverage it's been quite interesting uh, mediator patricia for you. one of the areas that you did talk about is um, in the context of task sharing and the opportunity for being able to make use of project management tools and some of these are even uh, what you can call it like the digital tools so that the work assignment is is, is very is, is is clear there is there is workflow and i think that's quite an interesting context that you have introduced uh, connecting it together with um, uh, uh, the, uh, well, say is, um, yeah, the mental health conversation in terms of these productivity tools just how useful they are so that mm. people can be, can, can feel and, and they can be comfortable in uh, in in being able to 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 uh, to be able to to do the work and connect also with their colleagues um mm. the other part that you did uh, mention on is um on the the the, the, uh, the comment by fisher bb with regard to and i think um, I'll, I'll i'll say that it, it speaks into just the need for mediators to cross pollinate their their understanding of their work with mm. other prof professions and mm -hmm. and just add on skills that are coming from other areas because um as uh fisher bb did mention did say that there's a need for uh, uh mediators to be able to have the understanding of mental health um uh, training and i think that's mm -hmm. just one of the beauties of this the session we have um today is just heightened to us just understanding what mental health is um, leave alone even in the in the mediation room. The other part that you did talk about is in terms of just the strategies that as mediators we can be able to employ. Uh, for example, making use of the caucus, uh, having breaks, and those now give someone time to be able to and uh, to go and recollect themselves and come back mm -hmm. uh, into the into the mediation. Mm -hmm. I think the the other emphasis for us as mediators is that there is a need for us to be quite flexible. And uh, I believe this is the context that now speaks into the fact that a mediation does not necessarily mean that it should be finished in three hours. It could need to be paced. And uh, in that, I think, is also just the opportunity for mediators when you're making an assessment of um, a mediation matter. Sometimes we say, you know, it will take three hours. But then when you get in, you realize that, yes, there's a need to probably let's have another session, let's have and then as a series of them. The I think the other opportunity that also comes in here is for uh, mediators to broaden their, I'll call it their, their collection and also their, their, their portfolio of other professionals who are in their circle. Then with that, if you are as a practice, as a practicing uh, mediator, then you would be able to have in your in your portfolio you know that if i require um, an advisor in a particular area i require an accountant then this is the accountant that i can uh, consult to be able to either uh, come and work with the, with the with the with the parties or i can make an inquiry if i require a counseling psychologist then this is probably one that i could refer or an institution or a facility that one can refer if a doctor is maybe required in my assessment because it is in the assessment of the mediator then you can uh, suggest to the client or you can um, uh, have, refer to them I think it would be quite interesting if you can speak to us a bit, just a bit more on the, the context of psychological safety. And uh, uh, that's, the, that's, the, 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 that's the, um, the quote uh, from Khan. Um, and and uh, it really talks very, very well into the workplace. Uh, leave alone whether we are talking about the issue of mental health or not. So perhaps you could just build on that. Uh, yes, if you could you could read for us the the quote and then just build just build on it a bit further to help us to understand a bit more on it. Thank you, Mr. Patricia. Okay. Um, the quote is: "The psychological safety is defined as being able to show and employ oneself without fear or negative consequences of self-image." status or career. Now, when it talks about psychological safety, one of the things that comes to my mind is um, uh, particularly the way that the employer will speak to, um, the way the employer will speak to their employee, the words that the person uses, um, are they words that, um, that will encourage are the words that will help this person realize that indeed um, 
I, I, I am, I am uh, valued. So it is, it, is, it is in a way that you can invite the person to, 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 to probably um, realize that whatever it is that they are doing, they are valued. Wherever they are, that they are still needed. So um, it's also to help them when they are at work to mention their emotions by, by name. For example, to try and find out how are you really feeling? Uh, how is this work going on? And they'll tell you I'm stressed. And even in telling you I'm stressed, you will not judge them. You will acknowledge and say probably, uh, uh, sorry that you are stressed or this work must be a lot. That's why you are so stressed. How can we then help you? So you, we are going into trying to find out how this person really is and giving them a space where they can share their feelings. They can share what they are, what they are uh, struggling with without, um, without being um, judged by the, by the employer. I'm not sure if I'm answering it, but that's how I would look at it. Okay. Yes, yeah. I think that's a very that's a that's a very thank you very much. That's a very good uh, broadening uh, for us. Uh, uh, and 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 the good thing about that broadening is that it just makes us also realize uh, uh, then that uh, the 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 aspect of mental health is uh, is is not a standalone. You know, it is within the context of the workplace, and that there are things that done in the workplace can help us to be able to manage our mental health uh, very well. I think mm -hmm. that's a very good, uh, very, a very, very good uh, contribution onto this. So we thank you, Dieter Patricia Oketch. We will be having the, uh, uh, the, uh, the open panel right after the, the presentation with uh, uh, Madam uh, Grace uh, from the Federation of Uganda Employers. Uh, the, the, the segment with our, our speaker, um, Alex Ninge, that we will be having a separate uh, discussion uh, segment and it will be shared with colleagues uh, and, uh, so that they can be able to uh, listen in. And he will be speaking to us on uh, building better workplaces and just where we have come from uh, where we are now and where we will be going to the future. So Asante Sana Medita Patricia Ketch. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to uh, invite Madam Grace. Madam Grace uh, is, Grace Nabakosa is from the Federation of Uganda Employers. Uh, she is the head of employment relations and legal at the Federation of Uganda uh, Employers. Uh, Madam Grace Nabakosa is uh, a lawyer by profession, and uh, she has been uh, she has trained in uh, in uh, in her academics in, in 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 Uganda, and also she has she's also qualified at the Kenya School of Law. So we truly have an East African-minded uh, uh, lawyer with us today, and that is what really makes this a very, very uh, exciting uh, opportunity. So the East African community is a region, uh, is a regional in intergovernmental uh, organization that has six partner states, uh, and it comprises of Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda, and the headquarters is in Arusha, Tanzania. This uh, session that we have today is the first in a series of the East African uh, Alternative Labor Dispute Resolution Series, uh, a regional regional labor uh, symposium, and uh, we begin this to be able to journey as an honor cycle. And what you're looking at is to be able to have one regional labor symposium that looks at the alternatives in labor dispute resolution. So, yeah, Nyabo Grace Nabakosa, Kari, how are you? Thank you. How are you? Good morning to you all. Um, good morning. Good morning. Yes, and it's a delight to have you. And thank you very much for joining us in this conversation uh, we, uh, we, together with your executive director, Mr. Douglas uh, Opio. And uh, we are looking forward to hear about the alternative dispute, uh, alternative labor dispute resolution landscape in Uganda, uh, what the experiences are, and yeah, where uh, the, where you see it uh, going on to. So Asante Sana and uh, Karibu Sana, I know you'll be, you have speaking points to be able to speak to us. Thank you very much, Karibu. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Patricia, for, for the exhaustive um, uh, aspects that you have shared with all of us concerning mental health. 
but specifically linking it to uh, um, mediation and how we need to, to, to collaborate more with the, the, the people that we deal with in these sessions. So thank you very much for that uh, exhaustive um, uh, uh, presentation. Now, moving on, on to Uganda, uh, we have also embraced and we continue to embrace uh, alternative dispute resolution. Now, broadly, it is uh, taken care of under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 2013. So uh, this act puts uh, to context, first and foremost, uh, the fact that um, ADR, or alternative dispute resolution, should be uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that, Isaiah. So uh, it, it puts to context that um, alternative dispute resolution should be embraced uh, before any court process is uh, actually taken uh, by, any, uh, by any of the parties or all of the parties to any particular dispute. So um, in this particular act that I'm talking about uh, provides for different mechanisms uh, over alternative dispute resolution. But over years, we have seen that it is actually been the negotiation and arbitration that have been uh, completely standing out. And as a result, most professionals have now been trained as, as, as certified mediators. So the process is, is basically that uh, any particular person can be a, a mediator, but largely we have seen it has been the lawyers that are taking up this role of, um, of mediation. So it is basically a training of about, um, of about uh, six weeks and then uh, a, a practical session uh, that is, is eventually done uh, by, by a person. So this is done and, uh, with the commercial court of Uganda. Now the commercial court really handles uh, commercial and trade disputes in Uganda. Now, after a person has gone through that uh, mediation training, and then now a person will then choose where do I choose to be specialized as a mediator? Is it in tax? Is it in, in, in trade? Is it in, in land disputes? Is it in contractual obligations? Is it in labor and employment? So now I am going to now zero down to labor and employment because now this is the subject of our discussion uh, this morning. So after having gone through the broad training and the broad attachment, then now a person uh, specifically as a mediator who is certified and you get a certification then now chooses that, well, I will be handling labor and employment disputes. And of course, then it means that you need to, uh, the person is then annexed or attached to uh, the courts that handle labor and, um, and employment disputes. Now that is basically now the mediation. So like I've already shared that among all the different uh, uh, mechanisms for alternative dispute resolution, it has been mediation that has largely uh, stood out. But at the workplace level, we have what we call negotiations, especially for those workplaces or those employers, companies that have labor unions in place, where they have to negotiate terms and conditions of service for, uh, for the employees who have become members of the labor union. So at that point in time, also negotiations uh, are, are also, are also uh, embraced to be able to come to, 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 uh, to a resolution of what kind of terms and conditions will be applying to these people. So you find that in most cases and depending on the circumstances, it has been the negotiation of the terms and conditions of service with the labor unions, but at a more higher level now mediation when it comes to the labor disputes and, um, and the labor complaints that may arise either after the employment has ceased or in the course of, of employment. Now, even besides uh, the mediation, at the workplace level, we always encourage employers that they need to have mechanisms to solve these grievances, these disputes that may arise. However, 
what has really come out very clearly and why mediation stands out is when employment has ceased. In most cases, employees find it very difficult to sit down and talk to their employers. And so you find that uh, we are going to have a situation where we will have now to embrace mediation. But the mediation is structured in such a way that uh, the, the, the Labor Disputes Arbitration and Settlement Act of 2006 then draws a line. Where does this person go? Either the employer who is aggrieved or the employee who is aggrieved. Where do they go to access these mediation services? So as a starting point, they first go to the labor office. Now in this labor office, it, it, it becomes very mandatory that the starting point of a labor officer is to mediate with these parties. Now, that is why it gets back to the situation that almost everyone who is involved in labor complaints or labor disputes may have to be trained in uh, or may have to be trained as a certified mediator because then you have to assist parties first of all to know where the error is where where, where, where what should the employer have done in these circumstances and uh, how then can the, the the issue be rectified at this point in time without necessarily proceeding to court and of course in these sessions then you have to tell the parties that uh, look here uh, these are the pros and cons of your case, okay? Looking at the facts that have just been presented. And we try as much as possible not to bring in, not to bring in uh, the laws, not to bring in uh, which law was broken or which procedure was not followed. But you know, you, 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 you apply to emotions to assist the parties uh, come, to, come, to, come to a conclusion of this labor dispute and arbitration. Now, um, that is at the labor office and we really encourage uh, that um, this, the labor disputes end at that point at the labor office. Now, like uh, Wangari had shared in the morning, we find situations where, for example, um, the mediation does not end in that particular day, oh, uh, sorry, on that particular day you find that you may have to organize a further session or breakups if you find some, some of the parties have a heated argument, others are speaking so loudly. So as a mediator, you find that, you know what, you have to break through and people pull down their emotions and then call back the session. So you find that not all mediations end on a particular first day, but you find that you organize a series of so many others that will have to occur. Now, um, in the Labor Disputes Arbitration and Settlement Act that I talked about, the Labor Officer is given up to eight weeks to assist these parties to mediate. In the event then it fails, then we now, the parties can now choose to go to another level of, um, of alternative dispute resolution, which is arbitration. So, but in other situations, you find that uh, uh, when Wangaria was starting, uh, she also talked about what we call uh, conciliation. So after the parties having resolved their issue, then the, the, the labor officer where the issue was first recorded, where the labor dispute was first recorded, then uh, takes it upon themselves to reconcile the parties. But it, again, it also depends uh, on, it is a case by case situation. What is it that are the facts of this matter? Is it that the parties are, the employee is going to actually go back and work with this employer? So that is when now conciliation will have to will have to come in play. But in most cases, you find that the termination has gone bad, and there is no need to reconcile these parties. Everyone chooses to go their separate ways. So at that point in time, there is no need to actually employ uh, employ conciliation. So you find that uh, conciliation will come in on a case by case basis depending on the circumstances of that particular of that particular labor dispute or labor complaint. Now, um, remember we said that mediation is largely, uh, largely used and, and we said that the people are, are, are largely also getting uh, certification to be recognized as mediators, but everyone chooses a particular specialty in which, in which they would like to operate on. But like we said, for example, even in these mediation sessions, 
it doesn't stop the parties to have their representatives available and even their representatives could be lawyers but these lawyers could have also been trained uh could be also be trained in mediation to assist the, their respective parties on um on what to do and uh, how is it that they can settle this labor this labor complaint or this labor uh dispute that uh, has been has been brought up so the mediator is basically now assisting the parties how do you resolve so uh, uh, guides the parties to come to you know a, a, a middle ground but like we said that within eight weeks this should have been closed in the event that it has uh, it has not um it has not worked out and again uh time frames are put in the law but really not followed like to the dot or strictly so in these eight weeks it is presumed that uh, there should have been a solution found and in the event that there is no solution found then now we move on to the next level of um of alternative dispute resolution which is arbitration now arbitration becomes a bit more legalistic because uh, uh evidence has to be brought up um uh, judge uh, uh, um, witnesses have to be uh, brought uh, before the arbitrator so in other words now at this point in time we can no longer mediate the parties can no longer mediate the, the best they can do is to present their evidence to support their case and then they leave it up to the mediator to decide on um, on what to do but uh, the, the most uh, encouraging part is that because even when the law is there or even, for example, the matters have still failed at mediation or arbitration, and then the parties now choose to proceed to court, and now the court that handles uh, labor complaints and disputes are called is called the industrial court of Uganda. Mm -hmm. Now, this court, even when the parties actually go there, they still tell the parties to go and mediate. Now this court has court annexed mediators. The other people that I talked about who have gone through the specific or certified training, and most of them are touched in different courts. The ones who are mediators in tax, in land issues, in labor disputes, or in employment matters. So at the industrial court, we also have certified mediators. So, all hope is not lost that if I'm at the labor office and mediation has not worked and we reach court, court is just going to decide no. Court will not decide the matter still there and then. What it will do is that the matter will be registered and at the first session of the matter, court will still tell you, please go back and, and mediate. So they attach that particular matter to a, certif a court certified uh, mediator. So with this court certified mediator, of course, they have to go back through the normal process of what a mediator is supposed to be doing to assist the parties resolve the labor dispute. And you know, the, the, the matter could be, um, uh, the, the matter could even be resolved partially. It's not that it is going to be resolved to the full. You know, you may find that the labor complaint with the, co uh, with the court certified mediator is going to be settled partially. So now, at that point when it's settled partially, the parties enter into what we call uh, a partial settlement. So the parties are able to show what areas have they agreed upon and what areas are left for the determination of court. So of course, there are also situations where even when you attend that court uh, court annexed mediation, the matter is com completely, uh, completely, um, completely settled. So what then happens is that the parties go back to court and then they record their settlement and it is adopted as um, as a, a judgment as a judgment of uh, of the court so that is how uh, these 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 aspects really roll out right from the time uh, the labor dispute starts but at, at the workplace level we usually have the negotiations with um, with uh, the labor unions and and uh, the uh, and the employer for terms and conditions of service. Then, when it comes to a specific labor dispute or a labor complaint, then we have the negotiation coming in where it fails at the labor office. Even when the matter proceeds to court, still the court will say, "Please go ahead and do court annexed mediation." Now, that court annexed mediation 
will then now assist the court to say that are we, are we determining this matter in whole that the parties have failed even at the court annex mediation or they have partially agreed. So if they have partially agreed, the court disregards other issues that have been settled at the mediation and then handles only those aspects that have not been that have not been settled. Then, of course, um, if there has been partial, set, if there has been full settlement, then the the the, the 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 settlement is then recorded in court, and then court adopts it as it was its own judgment, and then the matter gets closed at that point. So, of course, I I, I specifically talked about um, the industrial court, which I said it is the court that is handling labor complaints and disputes that have since failed right from the labor office or the mediation has failed or the arbitration has come out but the ruling either party is aggrieved so the appeal has to go now to the industrial court now the industrial court uh, operates in such a way that it circuits so it um it is for example based in kampala but uh, because it is a court that must handle all labor disputes within the entire country so it finds that there are certain probably like about two weeks in a particular year it circuits to western uganda so it carries out its sittings in western uganda so it means that all employers or all labor disputes that are in western uganda will be handled in those two or three weeks then uh, maybe in the next quarter it will circuit to northern uganda so it means that all labor disputes or complaints that are in, in, in Northern Uganda will be resolved in that particular period when the industrial court will be sitting in that particular, in that particular region. And of course, because Kampala is in the central, then all the nearby uh, labor disputes uh, where, which were recorded by employees in those areas then are resolved, uh, are resolved within Kampala. So, those are the operations uh, of, of, of the industrial court. Now, uh, because of, um, of COVID-19, we have experienced a backlog because uh, the sittings have not been frequent as they were scheduled. So now we have a, a bit of backlog of cases that were supposed to be handled in the lockdown, but have not been handled. Then now uh, we have also matters being pushed the hearings were supposed to be taking place during the during the lockdown and then they have been extended because then uh, gatherings are not allowed or everyone is fearing the other I might infect him or she might infect me. However, now uh, the court is it has become digital. Digital in the sense that uh, now the witnesses can be wherever they are as long as there is proper uh, internet connection and then uh, they are sh on a shared screen and then they can be able to 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 look out uh, at those witnesses uh, cross-examined and things of that sort now that is to the court itself however uh, when it comes now to the mediation sessions they have still remained uh, the way that the parties have to meet the parties have to mediate so um, with the expansion of the court premises now you find that um, the parties are, can easily sit, but with a lot of social, with a lot of social distancing. So yeah, basically, ladies and gentlemen, I, I that is how uh, the mediation or uh, alternative dispute resolution rolls out for labor uh, disputes and complaints. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Grace Labakosa. That is Madam Grace Labakosa, who is uh, the head of uh, legal at the Federation of Uganda Employers. And uh, she was uh, enlightening us, uh, or the head of employment, uh, Madam Grace Labakosa, the head of employment relations and legal at the Federation of Uganda Employer, Employers. And uh, she was enlightening us on the uh, on the ground in Uganda, uh, what is the, uh, the status and how is uh, labor disputes resolution done and also the workplace uh, relations. So as we said earlier, this is uh, the first in an East African alternative labor dispute resolution series uh, on uh, regional, uh, regional labor um, symposium. 
as we uh, at Wasiliana Hub um, get make a circuit of the East African region. And uh, this is a great opportunity for us as uh, professional mediators to also be able to understand how can we get our practice to be able to move into the East African uh, region. As we do have uh, this, 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 this particular discussions. Uh, so Madam Grace, because it was uh, quite enlightening to hear from you uh, on, in the context on the, on, on, on the part that uh, negotiation is actually a key, uh, is a tool or is actually a key uh, aspect when it comes to the, the labor disputes uh, uh, resolution in, uh, in Uganda. And, uh, it, um, and uh, um, an inquiry which we would have on this is uh, just how the recognition of outcomes of a negotiation are, uh, what's the provision for it, or it's really just left internally within the, the organization. And also it was uh, quite enlightening to hear the the stratification that uh, yes, you move from negotiation to mediation, um, arbitration, and also when you still get into the industrial court, or, um, or again, when you go to the labor office, you will find a labor officer and it's mediation that is um, the, the first line. Uh, it was also quite interesting to, or, um, to appreciate that uh, even when you go into the court, that uh, you will now go and uh, yeah, still find that mediation is the, is the option. Uh, quite interesting also from your discussion is with regard to the mobile industrial, uh, the, 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 the mobile uh, industrial courts um, um, of Uganda. Uh, with in how it moves from one region to the other, and just an inquisition uh, based on that would be uh, that uh, then uh, what is just the average timeline it takes for a labor matter to be resolved, because if it's the same court that is going to go around the entire country, you know what does that mean for uh, someone who has a matter uh, in, in in July and the court has not come to. Um, to the particular region. Of also quite great interest would be with regard to what we can call the, um, the, the, the social um, status, because we have uh, employees with different uh, social statuses. When I say social statuses, that also could also come in the context of the income levels. And uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, disputes that are from what you can call it like people who are in the uh, the, the, the manual the man, manual work or the lower level of work uh, before you even get to the supervisors just also how what is what are the routes that they use for resolving their disputes because well, well and probably this may be a presumption you may find that they may not necessarily be uh, running into one of the formal uh, systems of uh, the, uh, one of the uh, one, one of these that we have talked about here. So probably that also is something you could um, en enlighten us on. And uh, yes, we noted that you said that uh, at the labor office that uh, the labor officer has eight weeks uh, to be able to handle um, uh, the, the, the mediation or with the case. Then uh, uh, I think uh, from there is where now you did indicate that uh, then conciliation, trying to, uh, to, to reconcile the parties it becomes um, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the options. And it'd be interesting to hear just in terms of what is the, um, what is the either the successes of, uh, or, or just the application of conciliation uh, when it comes to, to, it, uh, to, to the workplace in Uganda. The other inquiry that would be there for Madame Grace Namakosa of the Federation of Uganda Employers is with regard to the labor uh, their disputes and uh, the work relations when it comes to the government. Um, how, how, how is that handled? What is, uh, is there anything that's probably maybe sometimes very specific or peculiar with regard to just how the government uh, labor disputes are handled and are resolved? Uh, again, our mediators involved, how are mediators involved? Um, then uh, it would be interesting to also hear from you when it comes to the aspect of industrial action. What is the procedure for, what is the, yeah, the, pro, the, 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 either the steps uh, to an industrial action and, and, and what you can call it like a, a legit or one that is uh, approved of, uh, what is that, what are those steps for industrial action uh, in, in, in Uganda? And I'm saying this because you find that in different countries, probably the, yeah, the, 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 the union is supposed to give a notice, then after they give a notice, you know, a number, uh, the, a number of steps. It'd be quite interesting to hear that. And also just either how mediation has been able to be part of the uh, industrial action uh, in, 
in, in, in Uganda. So, Madam Grace, we probably could uh, yeah, just kick off, kick off with you or, or move on with your comments uh, in that particular, in this context. Madam Grace? Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, those, uh, for those comments or questions. Now, um, I spoke about uh, negotiation and uh, I said that um, this, this, take, this takes place at uh, more or less a, a workplace level where the employer and the labor unions that represent those employees uh, sit and negotiate on the terms and conditions of service or entitlements of those employees who have become members of the labor union. So whatever is, no, is negotiated is eventually documented and all the key parties eventually sign off on uh, that particular documentation, depending on the circumstances uh, of what is being negotiated on. So whatever is agreed upon, then documented and signed off by the parties. Now, under the Labor Unions Act of 2006, uh, those agreements uh, or the outcome of those negotiations must be registered with the ministry responsible for labor. So that uh, the Labor Union takes it upon itself to register. Uh, the outcome of those negotiations and uh, a, a certified copy is also then kept with the employer and uh, a union also keeps uh, keeps a copy so that is the requirement of the of the law when it comes to the outcome of those negotiations carried out between the employers and um, and um, the employees or the labor union um like I said, uh, when it comes to the time frame, for example, of eventually resolving um, uh, matters at the, at the industrial court or the labor disputes at the industrial court depends on a case by case basis. There are matters which, for example, that are on appeal. If, for example, uh, an employee or an employer appealed against uh, the outcome of an arbitration and good enough the industrial court is circuiting, for example, in Western region, that matter would then be resolved within those three weeks. So that is one particular scenario. However, there are some matters which are at the extreme starting point that could even roll until, until uh, about two, two years. So, in a normal court situation, if it weren't for COVID, a case, a case would take approximately two years to eventually be resolved at the industrial court. However, because of this COVID, for example, I have some, I have some about two cases for the employers that have gone on. We are actually, we're actually in the fourth year. So because of the COVID and the lockdown, we have lost almost two years in between, but ideally, this matter is one that should have been already uh, had judgment and employees probably settled or the employer knows what kind of action should be taken. So um, in an ideal situation, it should be approximately two years. But because of the hiccups that now we have had because of COVID and the lockdown and courts were not seating, they had not yet uh, adopted digital methods, you find that we have had a backlog. So. Uh, we even anticipate that even on top of these uh, uh, of these four years, we are going to have another additional one or two years. So it will take us to about six years to eventually resolve this matter because the backlog is already there, like I had already said. Now, when it comes to, to, to the workplace, um, for example, at the Federation of Ghana Employers, we have encouraged employers to have policies and procedures to guide them or guide even their employees that when, uh, when you have a concern, when you have a misunderstanding, how should it be resolved? What steps must you follow? Do you report it to your immediate supervisor? What should even the immediate supervisor do? Okay, so trainings around those areas have also been held with employers or their management teams, okay, to, to let them know what are the expectations, but what is it that you must have in your policy and how do you let employees know without necessarily moving to the labor office, necessarily moving. So we don't want that unnecessary movement of the back and forth on matters that should be really handled in-house. So we encourage employers to have these policies and procedures 
on handling in-house issues, handling uh, in-house misunderstandings when um, they are still at the workplace, uh, at the workplace level. Now, like I said earlier on that um, the most largely used alternative dispute resolution mechanism has been uh, mediation and, and uh, negotiation. But when it comes to conciliation has been on a case by case basis. And it has been done that uh, it has been done in such a way that um, um, uh, if the employer is going to, for example, the parties have agreed that instead of going ahead with this termination of your employment, you can actually come back to work. Now, in a situation where you require an employee to come back to work, there is need to mend that relationship that has somehow been broken by this labor dispute that has been brought before the mediator, okay? So now an extra mile has to be taken by this particular mediator to assist the parties to mend this relationship as they are going to move forward to continue working together. So conciliation has been brought about in situations where we think or the parties have agreed that let this employment relationship go on okay we have since settled this labor dispute but we need to go on and continue working with one another then that is where uh, conciliation has largely been has largely been uh, been encouraged but in most situations parties don't want to continue working with one another everyone wants to go there separate their separate ways. The employer says, I'm tired of you. And the employee says, I'm also tired of you. I don't want to come back to work. So at that point in time, either party is settled and conciliation is not considered at that point in time. Yeah. So that is where the cut through. So the mediator has to decide on a case by case situation when can I now bring in conciliation to be able to mend. Um, to mend uh, the broken relationship between the parties that, uh, that we're handling. Now, when it comes to uh, government labor disputes, they also follow the same process and procedure. So what is in the Labor Disputes Arbitration and Settlement Act is then duplicated in the, um, in the, uh, in the Labor Disputes uh, Government uh, Settlement Machinery. It is also an act of 2006. Yeah, so in that same act, what has been put in the Labor Disputes Arbitration and Settlement Act also still them guides uh, when it comes to mainstreaming. For example, the employee had, uh, had a dispute with Ministry of Public Service or any other government entity, okay? Then also they follow the same, same procedures of going to the Labor Office, Although it is difficult because the labor office is governed actually by the by the Ministry of Labor, so it becomes a bit you know a bit hard. But then the matters eventually proceed to the industrial court. Then the industrial court will then uh, commission off that a, a court annexed mediation needs to needs to needs to be embraced. Now, lastly, on um, the issue of industrial action, actually uh, Wangari, you had already pointed out the steps that. Um, First of all, employees have a right to take industrial action. And that is that has been guaranteed uh, under the Labor Disputes Arbitration and Settlement Act of 2006. But uh, in doing so, the same act reiterates that you must notify the employer. However, the act does not say that this is the time. It just says reasonable time. So how reasonable is reasonable depends on, on a case by case basis. So at that point now, the, 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 either the labor union or the employees have to write down and say, for us, these are our grievances or these are our concerns that have not been addressed or safety and health or when it comes to issues of um, maybe protective wear and so many, so many others, you know, allowances, ETC and you notify them in good time you also the employees then have to also say that should you not take action or should you fail to meet us and we agree on what should be done immediately or medium term or long term then we shall proceed to take industrial action now that is the requirement of the law 
But you find that in most cases, that is not what is done. Employees just wake up one morning and say, today we are coming to work, but we are not going to work. So they'll just clock in and just sit there outside in the compound the whole day. They have not destroyed the employer's property. They have not done anything. And they just sit there in the compound. So it is just a sit down. Others actually carry out a real strike or a real demonstration, depending on the circumstances. But they just come and just sit there. So the ministry responsible for labor, of course, can, um, can, um, can choose now to declare the, 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 the industrial action unlawful. As long as the employer was not notified, then the act says that the ministry responsible for labor then can declare that industrial action unlawful. But in doing so, it again, it again puts a settled ground where it says again that uh, the employer will not terminate because especially if they're raising issues that are on ground, okay, that are, are real and genuine and reasonable and existing. Then now that is where now the employer and the employee's representative of the labor union are then called at the ministry responsible for labor to still iron out these issues. Now, the only bad part is if they are involved in destroying the uh, employer's property, that is now when the situation goes out of hand. But if there was no destruction of property by the employer, then in most cases, the ministry employers, the employer not to take any disciplinary action against them or not to terminate them, but now seeks to guide the employer to be able to resolve these issues that could have led to this particular industrial action. Yeah, so basically that is it. In, in most cases, no employee informs the employer that they are going to take industrial action. It is not, it has it, very few circumstances in Uganda. Yes, so people just wake up in the morning and just say, we're going to have a sit down or we're going to have a demonstration and they hold their placards and they are saying, we want this, we want the other, we want this and things of that sort. So yeah, that is what happens. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, yeah, Madam Grace, for that uh, the exhaustive and that very deep insight that you provided to us. And that leads us also to the additional questions, so some, of the, some of the advanced questions that uh, had come in. And uh, I will I will read them uh, I will read them as it allows you to also just be able to 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 to, to digest them and so that you can be able to uh, share with us. And uh, let me pick uh, the first two: is uh, what are the fees charged for services um, on average or indicative? You know, if someone is offering uh, negotiation services, mediation services, arbitration, litigation. Uh, you know, in, in Uganda, in Uganda shillings, or, in, or uh, let me say like the US, uh, USD conversion. And here, this question could be coming from the context of, uh, uh, so ultimately, you know, what does it cost the person who has the labor dispute? And especially when, if they take up, let's say the route of um, a mediation or a negotiation or arbitration, and it could be that they, they, they take it up with a private, uh, uh, a private route, and also if they happen then not, not to go to litigation or if they choose litigation as the route, what would be the the, the fees that are uh, the, the, the the someone would be charged for such a service? Uh, quite indicative, I believe, um, or there could be like you know there there are stipulated uh, guidelines in terms of if someone has a labor related matter, then this is the the fees that are charged for such a service, and that is what is actually followed on average by the practitioners. Then uh, the second question is on, um, uh, yes, oh, yeah, thank you for your message, Madam Grace. Uh, then what international labor protocols is Uganda part of? You can just give us um, a number, just a number of them uh, uh, that Uganda is part of. And are they applied by employers? I think tied to this also, and it, 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 do employees also follow them? And I know, I mean, like some, a number of them are maybe around for, maybe for, uh, for relating to trade unions. Uh, do they follow them? And what's the implication of having these protocols uh, being applied? Uh, what's the benefits or, and even sometimes, maybe sometimes they become even, uh, they are, uh, they stifle or perhaps, 
So what could what would be your comments um, ar around that? So uh, the, the the question with regard to government uh, workplace disputes uh, that you, labor disputes that you have handled, and also with uh, then the next question was on industrial action and collective bargaining disputes how they are handled, and you've given us um, an insight to how. Uh, they, 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 how they are handled and uh, how they, 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 they arise. So, Madam Grace, so we could have that, and then we can we will move to the next uh, uh, segment of the of the questions. So, Madam Grace, if you may. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Wangari. Now, moving on to the first question you talked about about uh, the charges for negotiations, uh, mediation, arbitration, and EPC. Um, there has been no uh, particular fee structure. Sorry, uh, there has been no particular fee structure when it comes to alternative dispute resolution. But uh, for example, you find that a certain certified mediators then start their own on firms where uh, imp uh, where different uh, clients can be able to contact them. So because there has been no designated regulations on what kind of charges to be made, then it, it is left by uh, that particular uh, firm or that particular individual uh, when it comes to what to charge and how to charge and in what circumstances. But however, when it comes to litigation, for example, if you are a lawyer and it comes to litigation, then we have uh, the advocates uh, rules that then guide you on what to charge, at what point to charge. So that is the only exception with litigation. But in all these other aspects of alternative dispute resolution, we find that there have, no been, there have not been any regulations brought up by government. So it is left to a particular individual to know how to charge depending on, on the circumstances. But most of the mediators, certified mediators, um, charge either per session, uh, or some of them charge a particular lump sum, depending on, on the circumstances. Or they know that if the matter is settled this way, then maybe a certain percentage will go to doing these other uh, aspects. Of course, then when, it, it, when, when you are a lawyer, and, and because you have to do a bit of some matters which are pro bono, to be able to have your uh, practicing certificate renewed, then also those are some of the issues that you can take on on pro bono, depending on the depending on the circumstances and the <coughs> type of client that you are handling. The international protocols, uh, of course, uh, like Wangari said, we have the, the East African uh, market market protocol that we are part of. Uh, we are also we have uh, what we call. Uh, the International Labor uh, Organization that comes up with uh, various uh, uh, standards and recommendations that uh, we are expected to ratify. So we have uh, approximately ratified those international standards uh, that are 31. And the requirement is that uh, after assenting is that we have to ratify them. Ratifying them in, 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 in our national laws, in, in our various regulations, so that is what uh, so far we, we have been following. So of course, the moment government has assented and ratified, it means then that the employers have to comply by having uh, their practices streamlined to reflect what the law says, uh, the domesticated law, or to have in place policies and procedures that, uh, to, that, um, that, uh, to that effect that are going to reflect uh, the aspirations of what the international labor protocols are having. So we are a member of the international labor organization as, as a country. I think I also talked about already about uh, the government workplace labor disputes, and I said that they follow the same, the same, the same procedure uh, that we already uh, outlined of the labor office, then mediation has to be implored, and uh, of course, there also matters go to go to court, and uh, where required, then um, uh, court annexed mediation also comes in in, in play. Um, uh, unions, industrial collective bargaining disputes, how are they handled? Uh, mediators involved? Yes. Uh, when it comes, for example, to industrial action, then. Um, uh, 
I think I would answer this in yes and no, depending on the circumstances. Yes, yes and no. Now, the industrial action could have led to the termination of employees. And if that termination was unfair, that means now the employees may sue the employer. So at that point in time, mediation comes in play. But because these industrial actions are in most cases at workplace level, you find that it is going to be the employer and the labor union or the representative of, of the employees who are going to sit down and negotiate and say, for us, these were our issues and this is how we want you to solve them. So they undertake a negotiation, a negotiation process. So I would answer yes and no. Now, um, okay, what is required to qualify as a, a court mediator? I think... Um, I think I had shared this already, and I said that the process is handled by the um, by the by the by the commercial court of Uganda that it, uh, undertakes to train. We have um, we have I think only one firm that has been certified as an institute to train mediators. So the application process. I will get the name. I've forgotten the name, but. Uh, all those that would like to be certified mediators then are trained by that particular institute. Then you go through the attachment process by the industrial court. Then, well, uh, as among the services you provide, you say I'm a certified mediator, I am a certified conciliator. Then some people have gone ahead to also create their own firms that provide these uh, services and then uh, they can be uh, applied. Now, uh, you know, this country being funny, you find that for me, I can study freely in Kenya and I get my certificate and do every other thing and even practice. You find that the law is a bit more restricting when it comes to broadly opening up to free movement of labor. It is there, but at, at a very limited scale, I could say. Like, for example, East African persons are allowed if the person has lived in Uganda, stayed in Uganda, or some of them have studied in Uganda. But for example, to say that I'm now moving from, from, from Tanzania to come and be or study as a certified mediator, some of, the, some of those situations are very hard. Yes, it has not been fully fully been fully embraced although it takes place but with a lot of difficulty it is not like i would move here and i come and i study in kenya with a lot of ease no difficulty and you know i present my credentials i'm a ugandan but i'm studying from here but in uganda yes it takes place but with a lot of difficulty and on paper and pen it shows that it is there but there is a bit of a bit of restrictions that you have to go here and there which actually do not exist if I came to study in Kenya. So that is the only challenge with that particular process. I think, um, I think yes, I, I think uh, Wangari have answered all the concerns. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for rounding off uh, and also just speaking on the, the, the queries that have been put in the, in the chat. And uh, with, yeah, as you've noticed, there's interest for uh, mediators from East Africa and uh, yeah, from the colleagues at uh, Wasilian Hub and also from Kenya to be able to get to know if they wish to be uh, mediators practicing in uh, in Uganda, how that 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 would that can go, and uh, yeah, so thank you for those uh, for for your comments. At this particular juncture, I wish to kindly invite uh, mediator Patricia Ketch, mediator Patricia Ketch. Uh, gave us um, the opening uh, conversation that we had on uh, the place of uh, or the context of uh, mental health and and the workplace. And uh, we will kindly invite Mediator Patricia Ketch to be able to just give us a, a summary of uh, the, um, the message that she had for us uh, for today. And then we will come back to uh, Grace uh, Nabakoza, who's uh, the head of employment relations and legal at the federation of uganda employers to also be able to give us um, her closing uh, message for today mediator patricia Ketch, how are you uh, patricia Ketch.
Okay, uh, we seem not, not to be able to be um, hearing the data partition or catch. Uh, with that, then uh, allow me to be able to now then uh, round off to uh, our uh, keynote message uh, present presenter. Uh, that is uh, Madam Grace Dabakosa, who's uh, from uh, the Federation of Uganda Employers. Uh, what would be you? What, what would be your uh, your message to mediators who are uh, in the in the conversation with interests uh, for the uh, uh, to be part of the East African uh, uh, region, serving the East African region uh, with regard to the industrial uh, uh, labor dispute resolution and also on the context of uh, workplace uh, relations, Madam Grace. Thank you very much, uh, Wangari. Uh, uh, dear colleagues uh, on this call, uh, first of all, I would like to encourage that um, uh, mediation uh, processes are, are quite interesting. Uh, you're able to meet um, new people, new experiences, and new issues over time. So, it is very hard to say that this is actually what is workable for me and stick to that. In most cases, you might have to change the tactics here and there. So it also requires that a continuous uh, professional improvement of ourselves is also, is also, is also necessary. Now, um, when it comes to the cross-border practice, uh, for, for mediators or for arbitrators. Like I said, it is, it is something that is, is doable. For example, why, why do I say so? Because you find that in most uh, uh, companies, or organizations that we have here in Uganda, they have their headquarters in Kenya, okay? So you see how you are actually at an advantage if you have your services being provided at headquarter, chances are, that even when they are in country issues, more or less you are going to be, you're going to be involved. So the issue of uh, East Africa and not being East Africa should really not be, should really not be an issue. Like I said, there are even people who, who carry out mediation sessions when they have not even been certified. And they th 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 there is really no, uh, no requirement to start saying that we are looking out for who is not a certified mediator, no. So what I'm saying is that we have had so many people who mediate so many issues, okay? But they have not been trained in any mediation. So what I'm saying is that it is really a skill, but a skill that could be enhanced by going through training and a person chooses which specialty they would like, they would like to take on. So. Uh, by ha us having a bit of restrictions doesn't mean that you still can't mediate matters when they are in Uganda or when they're in Kenya and things of that sort. You can still embrace it, but uh, more or less with, it is workable for, uh, for, for uh, multinationals that really come from Kenya and you have already been providing services to them. And yes, so of course it is the agreements. They, they don't look out for the, the mediator, no. Or was the mediator certified, no. They actually, it is the agreement, the contents of the agreement where the parties in agreement, was it signed off? Has it been registered with the court? And that is all, okay? So basically that is where it really rotates around. There is no clear cut that if you want to be a mediator, then you must be, you must be certified, you must do this and, and things of that sort. That is not really a requirement, but you know, for people who want to professionalize themselves, they have, have they have had to go through have had to go through this training, but I can also say that uh, there are very few uh, mediators when it comes to labor uh, labor disputes uh, and and complaints. So that is also a plus for all of us who are on this call, yeah, to continue pursuing those labor matters. Very interesting, and uh, very few very few people here in Uganda have have gotten the certification. Most people are interested in land in commercial, in contractual issues, and things of the sort, but very few people are interested in labor and employment, uh, labor and employment issues, and that is also um, shows that 
the slowness when it comes to when it comes to settling these uh, labor disputes and you find that we always have to have a case case backlogs here and there so yeah thank you very much wangari it was a pleasure being with all of you on this call and uh, yeah we pray that we meet again this time around physically thank you okay asante sana thank you very much uh, yeah thank you very much thank you very much grace for your your comments and also really just for your generosity as you have been um, sharing with us on uh, the 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 states the landscape in uganda the and and that has really been very enlightening as and as i as i indicated this is the first in um an an, an east african uh, alternative labor dispute resolution uh, regional uh, labor symposium series and uh, we started off with uganda and we are delighted to have had the federation of uganda employers just enlighten us on uh, the, the the landscape and situation in 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 in, in uganda so allow me to kindly uh, invite uh, our masterclass uh, leader, uh, that is mediator Patricia Ketch, who's a counseling psychologist and mediator. And today she was giving us a talk, uh, uh, which we started with on um, uh, the workplace and uh, mental health and mediation. So mediator Patricia Ketch, you, uh, welcome. And you may kindly just give us a, uh, your five key points for the discussion you've given us today. What do we take away with us from here? Welcome, Mediator Patricia. Thank you, um, and thank you, everyone. Um, the first very important point is that we must be aware that people go to workplace um, mental illness in terms of stress, anxiety, and that needs to be looked at when there's any dispute that arises. So, as mediators, we need to have our antennas up to to see these things. The sec the second one is that. Um, as as mediators, we are not able to um, to know exactly when somebody has a mental health issue because mental health is health is really internal. Unless they speak to you, unless they come to the the place and you see a sign, you are not able to tell. It is important for us to have a multidisciplinary uh, group. Anytime you're thinking of doing mediation and you come across something that needs to be handled by a professional who is not a mediator, you need to have those in your hands so that you can quickly call in someone. Um, I, I, think, I think it's also important to remember that giving somebody this good space in mediation and in the workplace helps to relieve uh, employee, employees and uh, parties of any, um, of any pressure or stress that they may have. So that if you are a mediator, you don't you're not rushing to end the session, but you're trying to help this person to ensure that uh, they make the right decision at the end of everything. And I think those would be some of the most important things I would like us to take away. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your key highlights. Thank you very much, Mediator Patricia Ketch, for the key highlights, uh, which we are able to take away with us um, today. Colleagues and friends, I would like to thank you for uh, the, taking the opportunity to be able to join us um, in, in our session today. Today is the Wasiliana Hub Quarter 3 Virtual Mediation Day Symposium uh, 2021. And uh, we have a regional outlook through the day. Or, or at the alternatives in labor disputes resolution and workplace relations. This is our session two and uh, our session two at 10 a.m. East African time, our regional panel, where we have had the keynote uh, dis uh, discussion on uh, the alternative uh, labor disputes resolution that, uh, or in short, as we are calling it, ALDR in Uganda. Uh, with the Federation of Uganda Employers, and uh, we are delighted that we had uh, Madam, uh, the, the, our, our very good um, and uh, representation today by Madam Grace Na Nabakoza, who is the Head of Employment Relations and Legal at the Federation of Uganda Empl Employers, taking us through the context of uh, all the alternatives in labor dispute resolution in uh, Uganda. And uh, also we had uh, Madam Patricia Oketch, who is our masterclass leader, 
uh, and a counseling psychologist and mediator taking us through mental health as this uh, uh, mental health as part of the mental health month and mediation in the workplace. We have a third part of the, the part of this uh, regional uh, panel, which is with our uh, fellowship coach, Alex Ninge, uh, who is uh, in uh, global business and sustainability. And uh, the topic of his uh, discussion is on the build better workplaces, the past, now, and into the future. So a separate recording will be provided for that particular segment. At this juncture, I wish to invite us all to be able to share in the words of the Kenyan national anthem so that we can be able to close this session. Madam Grace Nabakosa, please do take our greetings to your executive director in the board and also to your colleagues. And it was a great delight to be able to share this morning with you. And we are looking forward to be able to have more sessions with yourself and together with other colleagues as we do have the discussion on the alternative labor dispute resolution in the East African region, as we look into how we can be able to just amplify the voice and the sound of mediation and its growth, its use and its efficacy within the East African uh, region. Thank you also, Madam uh, Patricia Ketch, our masterclass leader, for your great dedication to the community of mediators, to which you are able to share what is an area that I know you enjoy, you excel in, and also something that really adds a lot of value to the mediation community as you get to understand the uh, cognitive, the intuitive, and also the, ref uh, the reflective uh, uh, areas that make our work as mediators become much better. So Asante Nisana, dear co colleague mediators for uh, joining us in this particular segment. And with that, we can share in the words of the Kenyan national anthem and as we lead in the first stanza of the Kenyan national anthem, Kwa Luga Ya Kiswahili, then we can close this particular session. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, Haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. Once again, thank you very much for joining us on this uh, Wasiliana Hub Quarter 3 Mediation Day Symposium held on the 23rd day of the month of September in the year 2001. Our next session will be hosted at 2 p.m. and it will be reflections on the international Peace Day, which is celebrated on the 21st of September every year as a United Nations uh, Day that is recognized to promote international peace. Then at 5 p.m., we have a session on this same Zoom uh, link that you have used to join this session. And that session will be on conciliation, a very good uh, session to be able to understand conciliation, its connection with mediation, and what's the opportunity for mediators to be able to also become conciliators, which is a practice that is used uh, heavily within the workplace. Then at 7 p.m., we will be having a session with uh, the Northwest Conference USA, and that is a session for the fellows. For the fellows, you have the link for this particular session in the fellows chat later today evening. In the morning, we started off at 7 a.m. with the Women in Mediation Leadership Fellowship uh, Prayer Hour, and we thank you for joining us in this segment. So with that, it's an opportunity for us to say goodbye and have a blessed day. Mungu wabariki. God bless you and see you in the next section. Goodbye.